Should I make it? No, it's too late now. Never mind. to Facebook Live. I'm Carla and I work here at Pacific Animal Productions. Fact is we are celebrating an early Mother's Day. That's this weekend in case you didn't know. So um, and I have to tell you I am the mom of Pacific Animal Productions. It's my baby and we started this project 30 years ago but who knew that we would be doing fun virtual live programming and because of that I've got to do a little shout out. We have a whole bunch of new things available on PacificAnimalProductions.com and you can go there and check it out because now we are virtual. We can go to your classroom, we can come to your office, and so I'm going to do some shout outs. We are uh, happy and proud to announce that we have done programming in Philadelphia and Pennsylvania. We got Massachusetts coming up, Colorado's kids are going to have us, and Washington this morning. So we get to go all over places that we couldn't drive and bring our animals. So it's super fun and we're glad to be here. And happy early Mother's Day. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Moms and animal moms. And um, I'm proud of my mom. She has two of us, my brother Kevin and myself. And I have two kids, Derek and Tim, but they're grown men now. But let's talk about animal babies. Anybody know, if you're out there watching, what some of our best animal moms are? Well, I've got to tell you, I'm a little partial to elephants. Those moms carry those babies for 24 months. Yeah, do the math. That's two years that they're carrying those babies before they actually give birth to an offspring that weighs about 90 pounds. And those babies are very reliant on their mom for everything from protection to getting the milk because they are mammals. But the best part about being an elephant mom, all of your sisters are their helpers too. So a lot of aunties are terrific moms out there. Elephants are excellent moms, but I brought some unlikely babies that the moms are super good for and I'm going to bring one of those out right now. The first one, I think you're going to be very surprised. First of all, it is, oh my, exciting! Look at this little baby here. This baby, yeah, they have moms, it's true. This is a little baby alligator, not too young, they're much smaller when they're first hatched, but alligators are from a family order called Crocodilia, and Crocodilian moms are better than any other reptile moms out there. The Crocodilian mom can do some amazing things. First of all, she has about 10 to 50 babies at one time. Wait, let's back up. Being a reptile, they don't have babies. Reptiles lay eggs, so she'll lay 10 to 50 eggs. Now what's interesting about that is that she just doesn't leave them and go on her way like some reptiles do. She actually goes out and prepares a very special nest for these babies. She will take and dig up a water bog, get rid of all the plants and sticks, and make sure that there's a place for when those babies are laid, the eggs are laid, that it can have different temperatures. Why? Because baby temperatures are very important. If the temperatures are 83 degrees Fahrenheit or less, those babies will be girls. If it's 93 degrees Fahrenheit or up, those babies will be boys. And if it's right in between, then she'll have a little mix of boys and girls. So moms are really good at knowing if they have to have more boys or girls in their environment. This little alligator is about five and a half years old and in the wild probably be a lot bigger because there are predators. Even when they're in the eggs, the moms have to be careful because predators like raccoons and birds will come and try to unearth or undig the nest and make sure uh, that those 
animals don't get in there, she stays very close by. And not only that, like little birds in an egg, moms don't always talk to the babies, but mama alligators talk to their little babies inside the eggs. They make the most interesting sound. Sounds a little like, mm, 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 mm. I'm making the noise, let's see. Are you responding? Smiling. <laughs> so alligators will respond to their mom inside the egg. The moms will talk to them and they'll know right before they're ready to hatch. They'll unearth a little bit so it's easier for the babies to break through their leathery eggs. Now, if there's 40 eggs and about 30 of them hatched and there's some in there, the mom will go ahead and pick the eggs up with her mouth and give a little light shake, trying to stimulate the babies to come out. And if not, she'll move them around in her mouth, trying to get them to use their nose to egg shape uh, or open up the eggs so that they can break out. So she's very attentive, very unusual for a reptile. Now, United States and China are the only countries that naturally have alligators living in the wild. And alligators are super good in the wild because they eat a lot of things that other animals don't, particularly dead stuff. So mamas, these are some perfect examples of great moms. The crocodilian known as the American alligator. Oh, you guys, I think you should check this out. Our little alligator here, his name is Captain Crunch. And Captain Crunch gets that name because of his really big teeth. Captain Crunch, oh, nice, nice big teeth. Check it out. Captain Crunch here is an excellent swimmer, and he's been an animal ambassador with Pacific Animal Productions since he came as someone's, um, well, illegal pet. And uh, he will stay with us until he's full grown. Male alligators can get 13 feet long and weigh over 600 pounds. And we know that's too big for us. So when he's big, too big for us, we've got a place for him to go with a nice family family, family of alligators, because boys live with girls called a harem. All right, you guys, do you know how you say goodbye to an alligator? I bet you do. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. Bye, everyone. Captain Crunch. Now, we're not done yet. We've got a few uh, more fun things to share with you. And one more fun thing to share with you. And this next friend is from South America. And in South America, this animal has a very nice fur coat. Now, when I think of South America, I always think of tropical places. So that's where I like to go on vacation, warm and... But South America, just like the United States, has nice and warm places, and they also have some very snowy and high uh, elevation places. So we have an animal here that lives in the mountains of the Andes of South America. And here comes the handsome chinchilla. Chinchilla's moms can be terrific, because we are talking about moms here after all. Chinchilla moms have about uh, two to four babies at one time. They're called kits, K-I-T-S. And the kits are born very, very different than you would think a chinchilla would be born. A lot of people believe that chinchillas look like rabbits or a mouse, like a rodent. And indeed, they are a rodent, but instead of being born, well, Rabbits aren't rodents, they're lagomorphs, but uh, rabbits and rats and mice are all born very, very hairless, and they really need mom to take care of them. That's what's different with a chinchilla. Chinchillas have their mom ready to go, and the babies are about 111 days before they're born, but when they are born, oh my goodness, it doesn't matter if there was a snowstorm in the Andes or it was freezing cold rain because baby chinchillas are born with fur, lots of fur. They can get up and run around in about one hour. Baby mice stay in the nest for quite a long time drinking mama's milk until they are big enough to go on their own. Not chinchillas. Chinchillas are ready, set, go. Now this chinchilla is named Harriet because Harriet has lots of hair. Fact is, chinchilla's hair is some of the softest you'll ever experience. If this was touch a vision this would feel like, I can't even explain it, but one of my favorite explanations was from a young man that said a chinchilla feels like touching a cloud. 
Oh, we've got cloudy hair everywhere. I brought something and it may or may not take a bath, but we call this a chinchilla bath. It has some of their favorite bubbles. No, sand? What? Take a bath in sand? Yep, chinchillas take a bath in volcanic ash. So, there you go. You don't have to take a bath, but if you get your little booty in there, you can decide if you want to or not. So Harriet here takes a bath in this volcanic ash made from the mountains in the Andes. When they think it's safe and it's time, they'll scoot around the ash with their tail and they'll move away any branches, sticks, or anything that's in the way. And chinchillas will um, start rolling. They'll roll on their back, they'll roll on their heads, they'll roll on the side, and they'll scoot all around and put this ash all over their entire body. So ash is how they keep this fur in super good condition. Chinchilla's fur has about, well, if you take a look at your arm and you see one little hair growing out of the skin, that's called a hair follicle. Chinchillas, well, we have one hair that grows out of a hair follicle. Chinchillas have 300 hairs that grow out of a hair follicle. So they have very thick and dense fur that they can use to keep their body warm. Good thing about that, when it's cold in the Andes and the snow is coming down, it won't chill them. And if they're uh, out and the rain gets on their head and makes a little wet spot, they roll in this dust and it dries right up. And chinchillas can come out at night. That's why they have these big ears, because their predators are owls. And if uh, they can't hear an it is hard to hear owls though because they have silent flight. But if they hear a crack of a branch or something landing in a tree nearby, they will make sure that they stay very quiet. And if you take a look, they have very large whiskers. These whiskers are so important. If they're going into a cave or they're going between rocks, the whiskers will help them find their way so that they can find out what exactly is ahead and not get stuck in a dead end. But they'll get right into a cave to make sure there is absolutely no danger. Well, you know what? We love to ask if there's any questions. And today, my camera operator is Miss Jessica. Do we have any questions that I could answer for our friends on our Mother's Day celebration? Yeah, so uh, we have everyone definitely thinks that little Harriet is so cute. Um, and hello from Emily. Hi, Emily. And Bon Bon is watching, so your mom is My watching. mom's watching. <laughs> Love you, Mom. I wish we were closer so we could hug. And uh, Lorelai and Leandra want to know, um, are they marsupials? Lorelai and Leandra, excellent question for asking a very intelligent um, uh, something to find out. Are they marsupials? Marsupials mean that they have a pouch but these do not. They don't have a pouch, but I tell you, it looks a lot like a pato, which is a, a potaroo. It's a little tiny kangaroo. They look a lot like wallabies, but they are definitely in the rodent family. Rodente is their order. And they have the amazing teeth that can chew, chew, chew. And if they don't chew, their teeth can get too long. So instead of brushing, they have to chew to keep their teeth in good condition. More questions. Yeah, uh, let's see. We have Gloria is watching from San Antonio. Hi, Gloria. Nice to see that you're here with us live. Jennifer uh, would like to know, how old is Harriet? Harriet is about six years old, and a lifespan for a chinchilla is anywhere between uh, five, so Harriet's been with us a while, to ten years. World's record longest lived chinchilla, 20 years. 20 years, yeah. And that's it for questions, but Rosalie does say greetings from Yavapai County Fair. Oh, Rosalie. Hey, we're, Rose, we are really hoping that um, we're going to do some fun uh, education this year at Yavapai's Fair. So everybody, during these times that we aren't all gathering in large um, groups, we definitely need to give our moms super big hugs, whether it's virtually or a phone call. Or if you live with your mom, you make sure you spoil her particularly well this Sunday and enjoy your very happy Mother's Day. Fact is, if you didn't know, 
and Mother's Day was coming up. We have something to help you out here today. We have our my mom and I, and you can draw a picture of you and your mom, and maybe you and your brother or sister, just make it special for you and your mom. Happy Mother's Day card. So you can go on to PacificAnimalProductions.com, go to our teacher resources, click on that area, and then you can get this and print it out, and your dad can help you then it can be a surprise for your mom, okay? So ask dad to do that tonight, and you can color that and give her the most beautiful card for 2020 Mother's Day. My friends, I'd like to thank you so much. We had a really nice turnout for our Mother's Day, and we hope that you have a great one with your mom, whether you're with her or you're just loving her up and down with everything uh, going on right now. We thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful day, and we're saying goodbye and keeping learning alive with our virtual learning safaris. Thanks for joining us, friends. Bye, Harriet.